In the vast canvas of the cosmos, the Hubble Space Telescope unveils yet another mesmerizing spectacle. Journey with us as we venture into the depths of space to witness the brilliance of a sparkling neighbor galaxy like never before. Prepare to be awestruck as we unveil the cosmic beauty captured by Hubble's unerring gaze. The galaxy ESO 300-16 looms over this image from the NASA ESA Hubble Space Telescope. This galaxy, which lies 28.7 million light-years from Earth in the constellation Eridanus, is a ghostly assemblage of stars which resembles a sparkling cloud. Other distant galaxies and foreground stars complete this astronomical portrait, which was captured by the advanced camera for surveys. This observation is one of a series which aims to get to know our galactic neighbors. Hubble has observed around three-quarters of known galaxies within about 10 megaparsecs of Earth in enough detail to resolve their brightest stars and establish distances to these galaxies. A team of astronomers proposed using small gaps in Hubble's observing schedule to acquaint ourselves with the remaining quarter of these nearby galaxies. The megaparsec, meaning one million parsecs, is a unit used by astronomers to chart the mind-bogglingly large distances involved in astronomy. The motion of Earth around the Sun means that stars appear to slightly shift against very distant stars over the course of a year. This small shift is referred to as parallax and is measured in angular units, degrees, minutes, and seconds. One parsec is equivalent to the distance creating a parallax of one arcsecond and is equivalent to 3.26 light years or 30.9 trillion kilometers 19.2 trillion miles. The closest star to the Sun is Proxima Centauri, which lies 1.3 parsecs away. This recent view of ESO 300-16 was taken using the Advanced Camera for Surveys instrument on the Hubble Space Telescope, which is a joint mission led by NASA and ESA. It is part of a series aimed at surveying Earth's galactic neighbors. Around three-quarters of the known galaxies suspected to lie within 10 megaparsecs 32 million light years, of Earth have been observed by Hubble in enough detail to resolve their brightest stars and establish the distances to these galaxies, ESA officials said in the statement. A team of astronomers proposed using small gaps in Hubble's observing schedule to acquaint ourselves with the remaining quarter of the nearby galaxies. ESO 300-16 is classified as an irregular galaxy due to its indistinct shape and lack of nuclear bulge or spiral arms. Instead, it resembles the shape of a cloud, comprised of many tiny stars all clumped together. The stars give off a soft, diffuse light that surrounds a bubble of bright blue gas at the galaxy's core. The brighter, foreground objects represent nearby stars and galaxies, according to the statement. NGC 339 is part of the Small Magellanic Cloud SMC, a dwarf galaxy that lies around 200,000 light-years away from us. Along with our own galaxy, the Milky Way, the SMC is one of a collection of neighboring galaxies known as the Local Group. By measuring the brightnesses and colors of the stars of NGC 339, astronomers were able to estimate the overall age of the cluster, a method that places NGC 339 at around 6.5 billion years old. This makes it only half the age of the more common globular clusters. The relationship between massive intermediate age star clusters, such as NGC 339, and the true globular clusters is not yet fully understood. So far, None of these type of clusters has been found in the Milky Way. In this very detailed image, it is also possible to see a number of galaxies. They appear as fuzzy, extended blobs, contrasting with the sharp stars that make up NGC 339. Most obvious here are two elliptical galaxies, one towards the top left of the image and another in the center right. These galaxies are not associated with NGC 339 but lie far in the background, across the vast expanse of the cosmos. Most celestial objects, from stars and nebulas to quasars and galaxies, emit light at a range of wavelengths. Some include visible light, which is how astronomers are able to photograph them with space telescopes like Hubble. But the James Webb Space Telescope and the Chandra 10th Ray Observatory peer at heavenly objects in infrared and X-ray wavelengths that are invisible to the human eye. That data is often translated into visible colors to produce spectacular space images. Now, a group of astronomers is making those images accessible to a wider audience that includes visually impaired people, by turning the data into almost musical sequences of sounds. If you only make a visual of a Chandra image or another NASA image, you can be leaving people behind, 
says Kim Arkin, a visualization scientist who collaborates with a small, independent group of astronomers and musicians on a science and art project called System Sounds. Arkin, who describes herself as a former choir and band geek, is also the, the emerging tech lead for NASA's Chandra Observatory. Until a few years ago, this meant activities like adding sound to virtual and augmented reality science outreach programs. Then, along with a few others who became the System Sounds group, Arkin began converting X-ray data into audio. We have had such a positive response from people, both sighted and blind or low vision, that it's the project that keeps on giving, she says. Today, the group also works with NASA's Universe of Learning, a program that provides science education resources. Visual images from the JWST or Chandra instruments are artificial, in a sense, because they use false colors to represent invisible frequencies. If you actually traveled to these deep space locations, they'd look different. Similarly, Arkand and the System Sounds team translate image data at infrared and X-ray wavelengths into sounds, rather than into optical colors. They call these, sonifications, and they are meant to offer a new way to experience cosmic phenomena, like the birth of stars or the interactions between galaxies. Translating a 2D image into sound starts with the image's individual pixels. Each can contain several kinds of data, like X-ray frequencies from Chandra and infrared frequencies from Webb. These can then be mapped onto sound frequencies. Anyone, even a computer program, can make a one-to-one -one conversion between pixels and simple beeps and boops. But when you're trying to tell a scientific story of the object, Arkin says, music can help tell that story. That's where Matt Russo, an astrophysicist and musician, comes in. He and his colleagues pick a particular image and then feed the data into sound editing software that they've written in Python. It works a bit like Garage Band. Like cosmic conductors, they have to make musical choices. They select instruments to represent particular wavelengths, like an oboe or flute, say, to represent the near-infrared or mid-infrared, in which objects to draw the listener's attention to, in which order, and at which speed, similar to panning across a landscape. They lead the listener through the image by focusing attention on one object at a time, or a selected group, so that they can be distinguished from other things in the frame. You can't represent everything that's in the image through sound, Russo says. You have to accentuate the things that are most important. For example, they might highlight a particular galaxy within a cluster, a spiral galaxy's arm unfurling, or a bright star exploding. They also try to differentiate between a scene's foreground and background, a bright Milky Way star might set off a crash symbol, while the light from distant galaxies would trigger more muted notes. Thank you for joining us on this cosmic escapade. If you'd like to stay connected with the latest celestial discoveries, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. Until our next cosmic adventure, keep looking up to the stars.